Come on, I get it, honey. Why the getting's good? I'm milling about with Judith Owen, and there she be next to me. And she has a brand new CD, Come and Get It. She's got a residency at this fabulous speakeasy called the Mandalay Bar at the McKittrick Hotel. And I am just thrilled that she's here. Hi. Hi, Robin. I'm so thrilled to be milling about with you yet again after all these years after COVID. I mean, it's like, where has the time gone? I know. So what have you been well, up to the past this, three years? Yes. Um, I can only say because I live, as you can tell with my British accent, because I live between uh, London and here where you find me in New Orleans, I'm actually in my little behind my studio here in a little den with all my lovely photographs of new of the things I love in New Orleans. You've got to see the Mardi Gras Indians right behind me there. I but um, honestly, the best place I could have spent COVID was in New Orleans because people were still because you can't, you know, cope without music or food. So people were basically taking to the streets, taking to porches, doing performances. There were there was a piano that was like screwed onto the back of a flatbed truck so that you could so that people could drive around town and give concerts. It was really an extraordinary place to be and I'm so grateful. I was here, but the the upside of it for a lot of people I think is that you just got more creative and inventive. And I just wanted to do something joyful and and something that made me smile and made people happy because I just could not do one more Judith Owen, deep, meaningful, full of, you know, emotion, angst. Um, I know. Yeah, and, during, I, and, and I remember during COVID, you had, a, you had a show that was like, fuck off or something. Oh, Robin, <laughs> for fuck's sake, will remain in for me. For in the fuck's world sake. for fuck's sake because as a brit you know i would say every, every two minutes because every two minutes something weird would happen remember and i'd just be like for fuck's sake what now so it became for fuck's sake and then i did that twice a week and it kept me sane and it kept the community that that was tuning in every week twice a week it was amazing it was an amazing lifeline and that when i came down to be down in new orleans full you know full time um uh, that became live from Jude's place, and then we, it started to become the the basis of of, of this uh, because I've been listening to jazz since I was a little girl. I was introduced to um, the unsung, as I call them, the un, uh, my unsung heroes and heroines and role models, trailblazers like Nellie Larcher and Julia Lee and uh, um, Mary Lou Williams and. Pearl Bailey and Diana Washington, all these women who, uh, who opened the door for people like Blossom Deary and Peggy Lee, uh, who opened the door for women who want to be badass musicians, who want yeah. to be killers at the piano or whatever instrument they choose to be at or singing wise. And these ladies were singing about sex and celebrating it, female sexuality. This you is know, such a wheelhouse, Jude. That's all oh, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it, it it's kind of like you know it it's amazing that 70 years ago these women were singing about stuff that all the way up, right now right now women are being told to get back to get back in the corner to get back in their place and to not to dare um act or behave as if they are sexual uh creatures with with choices over their own bodies and beings and it's an extraordinary thing that these women were so you know, they were such, like I said, they were pioneers and they were talking about this stuff long since. So I made this album. Of course I made it here. Of course I wanted to do, you know, make this dream come true. Um, and I had the most remarkable musicians in the world down here. I had the time, I had the inclination. I wanted to be happy, smile and want to laugh and, and dance around the room. And the, and the outcome was come on and get it now. Now it's the super deluxe vinyl. Let me show you. Oh, who, idea who, shot, who shot those stunning photos? Oh my gosh. Who shot those um, photos? My friend, Rick Guest, he's the most amazing British photographer. And the reason I fell in love with him and his work before we became dear friends is because he, uh, he became quite famous for having photographed the Royal Ballet in London. And I went to see an exhibit of his and I could not believe that he could capture um, dancers in flight, in movement, in their every sinew, their every 
you know, their very being, but always moving, always in movement. And so the whole of this, and as you can see, as I said, said in the middle, you know, what he does, he manages to grab that thing that makes a person alive, moving, yeah. animated. And I'm an animated performer, so that's what he got. And he knew I was going for the kind of Rita Hayworth, Catherine Hepburn, Dietrich crossover. I'm a woman in a suit with a lot of big hair. I was going to say. Ruling, you know, ruling the stage, ruling her gentleman callers. Yeah, some of my then. favorite some of my favorite photos of you are where your hair is like standing up straight. Like somebody caught that image of yeah. you, of your, cause you're always crazy wild I'm hair. Always flying this stuff around. And, and yes. for this, of course, it's in that, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to just, cause I'm a jazz, you know, I'm a very jazzy writer and singer and performer. I mean, I love jazz so much as, you know, and I'm a singer songwriter and I love classical music and I pull it all together. We know that, you know, you, you've known me for so long now, Robin, you know, my style. Um, but I didn't want to just, just sing jazz standards. And I can't do anything that doesn't mean something to me deeply authentically and these were all songs I grew up loving and the, these are the women I wanted to be I wanted to be braver and bigger and bolder like them I wanted to be unapologetic I use this word all the time I wanted mm. to be unapologetic about being a woman and being proud of that and leading with that strength and it's taken of course my whole life to to get to that point and this record has really helped but um it has that it has that Judaism quality <laughs> it's, we, now I've got a plethora of young women who like come to my shows and reach out to me online and 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 through social you know media and say tell me how I need you know tell me how to do this how can I be more confident how 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 I love it I love it I look to these women to for those answers I'm so thrilled that that young women would be looking to me I'm thrilled when women of any age ask me that question because I feel like I feel like I'm on a a quest to prove, and I've got two girlfriends that have just kicked the kicked the the ceiling in with their stilettos, as it were. Jamie Lee Curtis and Jennifer Coolidge are both pro proven right now. Oh yeah, you do not disappear and become irrelevant when you're over forty or fifty. You do not suddenly become invisible. You're 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 not just like cashing in the chair in the chips because you're nothing anymore because you're irrelevant. Goodbye, Don Lemon. So sorry, but it's like you know, that's the kind of ignorance and cruelty that we've all grown up with, where you feel like suddenly you you no one sees you anymore, that you are irrelevant, that you turn to dust. It's bullshit. It and I, I love that these friends of mine, these women in particular, who I've adored my whole life are helping make that very, very clear. It's a very good time to be a young woman and to to be really, really, uh, like I said, as a musician and artist, to be incredibly uh, evolved and self-aware and, and strong inside and empowered. It's also a very, very important time for women who didn't grow up with all that encouragement and that, and that you know, that sense that they could do anything, be anything. It's important that women who are over 40 are supporting their fellow women, their sisters, as you want to call it, so corny, but are also realizing that they are not going to buy into this bullshit anymore. Right. That suddenly they don't mean anything. And suddenly they just have no voice and no one cares. This is not the truth. We've just been sold a bill of goods as far as I'm concerned. You, you know. own it. You own it. You own your, your power. You own your sexuality. Um, I've always admired that about you. And I have to say, when I got the email about this residency, I said to my husband, Michael, it's so way past our bedtime, but we have to go. Oh going. I love Michael. I love you both. I can't believe it's just I you know what I've there have been a few times during COVID where I have tried to figure out I'm serious how to get in touch with you how to find you what was your program what was your pod what was your I'm serious and honest to goodness when I got the the like uh, Stephanie says for the the McGittrick Hotel for Mandalay Bay for the for the residency 
milling about and I was just like it, honestly it, I know it sounds so dumb and and ridiculous but I actually was it, it was almost like I, I was like conjuring you up I was I love I was, it I was like sort of like I, I was drawing you to me <laughs> because I, I you know it's been a long time and I didn't I didn't know where you were and how you were and anything so it was like this is fantastic I know it's late but you'll be so glad you did it oh I I cannot wait so so I want to yeah. I want to break this down um yeah. how did you come to get involved and and did did who are the gentlemen callers I'm very intrigued <laughs> six piece and me and it is going to take the roof off let me tell you oh. so it, yeah, those are my gentlemen callers. They're the core band around which we made the album. Then, of course, we brought in a big band. I brought in you know, Jason Lasalas, get, guested, Nicholas Payton, uh, Donald Harris Jr. You know, it's just like extraordinary people that, were, that guested on the record. But that's the, the solid core. That, so that, that's the core that I'm going to be doing Jazz Fest with tomorrow here in New Orleans. So we're coming straight from that to do uh, the McKittrick. And, and I play, I did one, I tried out the McKittrick, you see, it, it's one of those amazing places. They do this show called Sleep No More, which is- Have you the, been? Have you seen- I have indeed. And it's really quite an extraordinary, terrifying experience. Did you do the James Bond thing too? No, I did James not. James Bond immersive, no. that was. Oh, no, no. You see, I need to go, you see, this is like different things all the time. See, I had a mask, I, I don't remember the mask, freaked me out. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but it's the, it's the film noir version of Macbeth. And then they end in the speakeasy in the Mandalay bar. And then I take the stage and then you have, and it somehow it makes perfect sense. You're part of Sleep No More? I follow it in the same bill, in the same thing. So the audience are right there and they, and they're seated and they're, and, and it's done. And then I come on as quickly as humanly possible and we're off. I and love so it. You oh, are that's great. and you're having a late night a late that, night okay now that makes sense because now i remember the ending to sleep no more we wound up in this bar behind me yes so, so that's you, it. it's gonna be that's so it. awesome and it just it, it's right for this music it's it's you know this is sexy music dripping with double entendre and innuendo you know this is exactly what where it should be it should be in a dirty red dark room let's yeah, talk please. about some of the songs on there so um i love the name of this king size papa <laughs> um there will be a uh i am actually going to do in july i'm going to be in june or july i'm going to actually do a um a video down here to go with that i mean i have to because because you, you kind of ask what comes to mind but i gotta tell you that king size papa i I got a man that's almost eight foot tall, four foot children that ain't all king size papa. And the punchline is, they take the door off the hinges when my baby comes to call. And it's just like, what a line. They take the door off the hinges when my baby comes to call. I'm gonna get goosebumps just saying it. This is what I mean. The humor, the joy of these women in their best, sexy flirtatious way you know when they're the, they're the band leader they're in control they're like they're they're doing it they're in, and there's gorgeous men around them playing it's fantastic i can't I, I tell you there's nothing better but king size papa is just it's alluding to you know a big <laughs> man robin okay you forced me to say it it's alluding to a big man i got a man that's more than eight foot tall Four foot shoulders and that ain't all King size papa He's my king size papa I take the door off the hinges when my baby comes to call A big man <laughs> um, What about my man's an undertaker? No, well, no you see Now these are the bonuses that are on the fabulous Yes. Super Lux. Um, it's a great, it's such a great song. My man's an undertaker. Um, he's got a coffin just your size. It is such, it, it's a Dinah Washington. So she, you know, she like made it famous. 
I mean, these these weren't none of these songs really were were songs that at the time you know were meant for for white people to hear because God knows you know they would have you know died of horror. Uh -huh. It was basically you know for African American audiences it's for the black audience, and it's like, and that's why they're so good is because you know they're not like namby pamby wet songs. These are just like yeah, yeah these are like get you in the solar plexus, and um, the idea that it's like. You're out, he's in, he's an undertaker. And if you're not careful and bother me anymore, he's going to put you in a coffin and take you out your feet going first. I mean, it's just like, it's so good. You better stop knocking on my door at night. You better keep your mouth shut good and tight. My man's an undertaker. He's got a cough and just your side. I mean, all these songs are just brilliantly, brilliantly uh, funny. They're stunningly witty. And I mean, I just think that that's what just makes me light up when I sing them. It, it, it's they're just the sheer joy of them on every level. It's fantastic. And musically, of course, they're just fantastic. What about uh, Satchel Mouth Baby? That's a that's oh. that's a that's a mouthful. <laughs> mouthful, and it means somebody like with my giant cheeks, with a big old face like mine. Um, Satchel Mouth is actually um, a song that was a huge hit for uh, uh, Nat Cole. Satchel Mouth Baby, we could have a lot of fun, a lot of fun, because you are. You are the cutest one. You're so neat, sweet. Walking down the street, all the ladies holler. They all holler. You are the cutest one. There I am living in, in London and, and outside London in Kent in the country. And my dad's an opera singer at Covent Garden. And so it's all classical music, classical music. But our house was positively throbbing with jazz and blues because he was such an unusual lover of this. And my mother was such a big band lover. And so- You got it all. I had it all. And he had this collection of 45s that were hits in Britain in the 50s. Nelly Lutcher, Fine Brown Frame, being one of them. And that was the song that started it all. I thought these women were stars. I thought they were famous in America. And when I first came over here, you know, in the 90s, it that's when the penny dropped and I realized that they were all but forgotten. Mm. All but forgotten. Except, you know, the Peggy Lees, of course, who's, you know, hard lives as they had, but you know, she was white. She, you know, she was white, she was successful, she was powerful. There's still more to remember. Um uh, and a more straightforward experience to be that white woman singing you know, songs that were nowhere near as much fun, by the way, you know, but I do, he's a tramp because I just, I love Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee was banned from the Southern States, you know this, because they thought she sounded too black. Wow. They couldn't believe that she wasn't. So this is what we're talking about. You're living your best life, Jude. I well, you. you know, <laughs> it's, it's, in all honesty, um, I feel very fortunate to have found such a beautiful project um, to come out of COVID with, you know, and something that liberated me in more ways than one, not just to make me happy and to get me out of this depression that we were all in, wondering if we'd ever be normal ever again, whatever normal means, but, you know, if we'd ever sing and play ever again. But um, the effect it's had upon me in, uh, in finally um, standing up and and being absolutely, you know, I've always been, you know, I've always been... A confident woman at the piano, but this is this is something else to feel to feel um unapologetic. There's that word again, but I can't help it. It's like with this record, I'm so proud of it and I love it so much. Singing this song, singing this music, performing. It's an act, um, it's an exercise in female self-confidence and empowerment because what it teaches you is to not really care what anybody thinks about you never and, well and you're pretty unique to know that because most of us do so much but I think the trick is to to know that not everybody's gonna like you 
not everybody's going to want to listen to your music. And if you're not a musician, you know, not everybody's going to, not everybody's going to like you. And that's okay. Mm. Because that's okay. You don't have to go through life being a pleaser and worrying about every last fucking person in the room thinking thinking that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. You really don't because... Um, because that just stops you from enjoying life and who you are. I got to cut you off because I'm running out of time. So oh my god! Let's let's, let's just plug this gig that and we. Doing. I know it sounds like I'm so. It sounds like they're going to come to some sort of like revivalist movement of me talking like this, but it's not. Um, I would love to plug. It's going to be basically Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at the Mandalay Bar at the McKittrick Hotel. Immediately following sleep no more i can tell you that it's 10 p.m on wednesday thursday and sunday friday 10 30 saturday 11 p.m come down tickets on the door have the most fun believe me what it is is that we're bringing jazz fest we're bringing mardi gras we're bringing new orleans to new york to the mckittrick because it's going to be a party I cannot wait to see you. I will be there on May 13th. I will be wide awake. <laughs> Saturday night, you got no excuses. You can you can just come on Sunday. Come on. I love you to Mises Pieces. Oh, I love you too. And I'm so glad that we've been like, we well, here we are again, reunited. That, uh, and it feels so good. Yeah. I can't wait to catch up with you. Oh, I wish that I I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, oh, oh, I say, I, 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 I wish I, I could travel his way. Always new. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you, to you. 